Baker's of great value to a lot of things in this league. I, we were talking about this as a staff this morning. Generally in my life, it's been veteran stars that get me to a TV. You know, the Currys, the Durants, the LeBrons, the Bradys, you know, the Aikmans. There are a lot of these young quarterbacks. I'm, I watched Cincinnati, Arizona last week. Kyler Murray's get me to a TV. Baker's get me to a TV. So I can make an argument that Baker is great for the league. Um, but as a, do you think everybody after that Monday night game, when Bosa acknowledges, yeah, Baker got me jacked up. Do you think there's a few guys in the Cleveland locker room, Greg, that would be like, bruh, scale it back a little. Don't make millionaires angry. No, no, I don't. I, I, everyone has that something that, that makes them who they are. Um, and Baker Mayfield, it's his personality. It's his passion. It's his fiery attitude um, and his approach to the game. That's what makes Baker Mayfield, that's what got him drafted. Number one overall. Yeah, wasn't when his you, size. It, ex- you look at Sam Darnold, your guy. Bigger, stronger, athletic. Prototypical guy. Quiet, doesn't say much, goes about his business the right way, but he's already a prototypical looking quarterback. So he already has an advantage. Baker Mayfield, if it weren't for what we're talking about, his his personality, his fire, his his passion, uh, his approach, does he go one, number one overall? No. Is he even being talked about? No. So this is what makes him who he is. And I think within the locker room, those guys, if that's all that matters, it doesn't matter outside that locker room. That's why he's going to continue to be who he is. Now he's just, they just have to get wins in that column, and then it'll quiet down. Who is your first coach in the NFL? Mike McCarthy. Okay, so it was McCarthy. So McCarthy was a pretty young coach mm-hmm. at, at the time. I, I said this, and I know you think I'm always beating up on wide receivers, but there are uh, weapons on the perimeter that I do think really work. Cooper Cup is incredibly valuable to Jared Goff. You can yes. just you can see it. Yes, I I think um, uh, uh, Zach Ertz and Carson Wentz, Gronk and Brady. I'm not saying receivers don't matter. Julio Jones, but then there are players, and I always felt this was Des Bryant and a little To where they're talented and they're worth a bunch of money, but their great games don't equal wins. Maybe because of their specialty players, their spectacular players, but not as... And I look at OBJ, and if you look, it's ha- it happened in New York and it's now happening in Cleveland. If you look at the five games, we can put it up again, and you look at his targets and catches, it doesn't matter. He's targeted a ton in week one, they're awful. He's targeted a ton in week two, they win. He's targeted a ton in week three, they lose. They start reducing his targets in week four. They look great. This week, they reduce them more. They're terrible. His performance, it's random. He's great, they win. He's great, they lose. He's terrible. They, they have an offensive line issue. I can get Trent Williams. I don't see OBJ as connecting and helping Baker. He sounds like he does, but Baker's 3-8 and eight when he gets sacked twice. He's getting crushed. Why not move OBJ and get an O-lineman? Yeah, this is this is a tough one for me because no, it's not. Odell Beckham is a playmaker in this league, regardless of what jersey or helmet he has on. When you look at what he was able to do in New York, typically what happens with a receiver of his caliber and when they have uh, kind of a separation from that quarterback or that system, it's oh, he was a system player or it was the quarterback. Well, in this case, with Odell Beckham, we know how valuable he is. We know what he was with the New York Giants. We know what he can be for the Cleveland Browns. However, when you're not birthed in something, it's like you're, you're, you're an addition. So how can we add to? How can we now bring you in the fold and make you a part of what we were already building? What I mean by that, this Cleveland Browns team in Baker Mayfield – they developed the, he developed the relationship first with Jarvis Landry and the guys around him. David and Joku, Nick Chubb. Exactly, Chubb. all these guys. So now you bring in Odell Beckham. Can he help us? A- absolutely, of course. Bring him, welcome, open arms with him. But it's going to be a process to mesh all these personalities and all these talents to get the best out of what we can be. And so it's just a process. But Odell Beckham, man, you don't – no, I, I, I'm not. A, I'm not quick to move a guy like that because he can definitely help you. Why it's 
his numbers are down is because he's always been a deep threat guy, a guy with the big play, and they can't and they can't protect. They just flat out can't protect to allow him to do what he does best. Which is get over the top, and they don't have time to throw over the top. Exactly. Uh, San Francisco, clearly, that was a problem. Um, you know, it, it, it's um, my theory on, tell me if you, as a player, did you ever think this was happening? So Jerry's paid all these guys early. But the Cowboys lead the NFL in free agents currently playing the most snaps. 40% of the snaps taken by the Cowboys. Players are free agents. Dak, the corners, uh, Heath, Amari, uh, free agents at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. So Jerry's going to have to get a discount somewhere. He can't pay everybody, right? So look at the schedule. We put it up on the board. Let Greg see the schedule off to the right there and for our radio audience. There's no value in paying him early when they're playing these horrible rebuilding teams. Look what happened starting with Philadelphia. Philadelphia, <laughs> Vikings, Lions, Patriots, Bills, Bears. Those are four of the top five defenses, often outside, cold, windy, crappy weather. Jerry calls the agent after week 14 and says, let's sit down and negotiate a new contract. <laughs> As a player, did you ever, because I think Jerry's got a number. Jerry's paid everybody. Why is he waiting on the franchise quarterback? Jerry looks at that schedule and says, I know I got to pay him. The only leverage I have is now. Bad games and timing. Did you ever think as a player that, that there was teams were waiting for the right time to negotiate with you? That's what they have to do. That's their job is to get you for the lowest possible number. That's, they wouldn't be doing their job if, that, if they didn't do this. And when I look at Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys in this situation, with the way he's played the last two games, yes, I'm going to wait. But I think also they still have question marks. And I said this earlier on Undisputed. Like, he is the one question mark on that offensive side of the ball. Amari Cooper, we obviously know Dak Prescott has been better because of that acquisition. Ezekiel Elliott, they've paid Ezekiel Elliott. They know what he is. So the only person left is Dak Prescott. Can he be the quarterback that we need him to be to get us where we desire? He's the only question He's mark the left. the only question mark left. Has he improved? Yes, he has definitely improved. But has he improved to the level of where they're willing to say they being Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones, the decision makers, this is the guy that can get us to the pinnacle? Finally, Favre Rogers are very chummy. Uh, we played some tape yesterday. Aaron called him Farvey. <laughs> I'm not I want to be chummy. What's up, guys? Where, 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 where am I? Are at? you surprised? Do you think it's real and authentic? They're buddies now. I think it's real. I think it's real. I definitely think it's real. When you've had time to um, get away from what was potentially a problem in competition and you're no longer at each other's throats or at each other's uh, pretty much you're competing against one another for or vying for a job, then that's out the way. That's that's the wedge that will separate marriages and, and relationships. And I think that's removed. And so now you have one guy who's not playing, who understands the talent that is playing. Greg, I had a theory yesterday that Aaron's first seven, eight years, he didn't really get the challenges of being the quarterback in Green Bay. Now Aaron's seeing the challenges. We can't get top defensive free agents. I have no owner. They let go of my quarterback coach. I can't go out publicly. The first five or six years starting, I got a Super Bowl. I got my Greg Jennings. I got this and that. Then, so, so Aaron didn't understand the reality and the challenges of playing in a city the size of, what was it, Montana? Uh, like uh, Billings. Billings, Montana. Mm -hmm. That's how big it is. So Aaron's like, this is great. Then all of a sudden, Aaron starts realizing, I can't go out. We can't get top free agents. We can't pay a quarterback coach who's clearly good. I'm blamed for everything. Um, I think Aaron's starting to understand, oh, that's, this, is, this is what Brett sometimes got cranky over. Because I think it's the most unique position in American sports, Packer quarterback. It'd be yeah. like Christian Ronaldo playing in Butte, Montana. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't. That's not the way it works. Generally, Shaq left Orlando because it was too small. Orlando seven times the size of Green mm -hmm. Bay. Mm -hmm. I, I can buy that. I, I think a lot of it has just 
maturity of where you are in your career. And I think at this point, when Aaron took over at quarterback, he had a lot of pieces around him. And although he was the focal point, all of the blame was never on him solely. It's kind of like when you have, uh, man, wh- who was this that I compared it to? Um, I'm not, I can't recall, but Aaron Rodgers right now in his career, all the pre- Kobe, Kobe and Shaq. That's what I compared it to. It was like Kobe and Shaq. When Kobe had Shaq, it was like, great, we're, we're, we can win together. That was Aaron and all the guys around him, myself, James Jones, yeah. Donald Driver, blah, 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 all these pieces and the defense. Now, when you transition out of that, now it's just Aaron. Now all the all the pressure is surmounted on him. Same with Kobe, but he was able to win. Aaron was unable to win, and so now you start to say, you know what? I'm not gonna because he's maturing. I don't need to put that pressure on myself. I know I want to win and I need to win, but I need these guys around me to get confidence, and I need to trust that their abilities are what's going to help us win, not just only solely my own. And I think that's where he is in his career. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.